excited. I was, I've was. i been playing a lot of music and I've been really, really, really inspired by music and I just I thought, you know what, I'm going to incorporate my two favourite things, music and art, onto one thing. So I've got my watercolours all set up and I am going to paint and draw Australian birds onto this sheet music. I printed it off. I've got uploaded onto my computer and I printed it onto watercolour paper so it'll actually hold up really well and I thought I'm just going to do lots of little Australian birds and yeah I thought that would be a lot of fun so first of all I am going to paint or draw I think I'm just, I'm just googling little birds um, I am going to do Australian birds and I'll get a little wren up ready Australian birds I'm just googling and I'll get a reference picture that I can use images and I'll just modify it to suit myself so I'm going to start with I think I'm going to start with a little wren we'll go with we'll start with a little blue wren I'll just go find him a little fairy wren they're called so I'll start with a little fairy wren so these little birds are teeny tiny and very cute I'm just going to find oops where'd it go hang on fairy, I'll just go fairy wren fairy wren they're teeny and tiny. We've got these living out in our back pat backyard. So, and they're fun little creatures. I love watching them. I can spend hours watching them. Actually, I might just, I might draw a little girl and a little boy one. I've got a, a cute little picture of a little girl and a little boy fairy wren. So I'll do the little girl one here. Because yes, my two favourite things are music and, and animals and painting. Well, three favourite things, music, animals and painting. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, I'm going to incorporate those. Oh, that's what I've got to do. I've got to put my um, multi-stream up so I can see chats. There we go. Because I'm streaming into Twitch and YouTube. So I'm going to start by drawing the outlines of all the birds. I'll get all the birds positioned and moved around where I want them. So this is number one little fairy wren. And I'll draw his little po little partner just over here. Actually, that's behind there. I'll do it on this side a little bit like that. I'll do this little guy over here. So they're just sitting there looking at each other. He's a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, but a little tiny bit bigger. He's a plump little dude. He's a very plump little dude. And they're just little circles, really. They're just very simple little shapes. And his tail's down. So I'll draw his tail back over there a little bit like that. Like that. And I'll draw his little beak on. I can get my, I've got to get my kneadable eraser. I had it yesterday. I cleaned everything up. Note to self, don't clean things because I lose things. Hello, Deb, how are you? Loving this cool morning here. Might be able to paint without the fan. Oh, good, yes. Good. We've actually got a quite a, a moderate day. It's not a, quite a nice day. So, not too hot. So, I take it you're in Queensland. <laughs> Everywhere's hot in Australia. Um... So, I, yeah, that's the thing. Like I, find, I, I, yeah, it dries out your paint too fast. So I'm just going to draw, mark in his little colours where his colours are going to be. And I was, I was tossing up whether to do acrylic or watercolour, but I, I decided on watercolour because it's just soft and gentle. And and if anyone knows me how to play music, you can play this piece, and it's a very Australian piece of music that I've decided to paint on. I'm going to keep this for myself. I thought it would be a fun one. But it's a it's an Australian piece of classic piece of music that I've used. That I've been practicing on the piano myself. So and I thought, you know, and I, this morning I'm like, I want to I want to paint, but I'm not I'm not inspired. I need something to inspire me and then all of a sudden it just popped into my head. Why don't I paint on music sheet? <laughs> I'm in the northern Oh wow, Lightning Ridge. Beautiful. The big wet, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's my little boy and girl fairy wren. Gorgeous part of the world, though, Dal. Gorgeous part of Australia. So that's my two little fairy wrens are sitting there. Now I am going to draw, I think I'm going to draw a... Uh, what am I going to draw now? I might draw a little parakeet down here, or a rosella, maybe a rosella. 
Hmm. I will draw a Rosella. I think so. These are another little astro. I've got to draw. Actually, I should draw a cockatoo. I'm going to draw a cockatoo, but he's going to take a couple of lines because he's massive. Compared to these birds, he's huge. So I might have to draw. How am I going to do that? <laughs> I could have him sort of laying down, like he's like, like bending down, picking at food. Um, I've got a kookaburra. I could do a kookaburra. I might do deciding, deciding. I could do budgies too, because budgies are very Australian, and I do love a budgie. Let's do a budgies. Do a pair of budgies. I've actually got another reference of a pair of budgies I've got to find. I had it from the other day. Have I still got it? Of course I don't. Oh, I've got another cookbar there. Um, oh, yes, I do. Okay, that'll do. I'll, do, I'll use that reference. Hello, Luna. How are you? How are you? So I'll draw a little budgie here. Actually, I'll draw two little bud. I'll do a couple of little budgies on this side. I don't want it all to be symmetric. I want it to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to get the basic shape on there. And then his little tail can come down the back. <laughs> like that. And he's perched, he's perched on the notes. I'm great. I'm really good. I'm very excited to do this picture. I need more gaps between the lines, but we'll figure it out. I'm very good. I'm actually... I've just gone on to holidays from work so I've got a few weeks off so I'll be able to play games and do lots more art so which will be great I'm a bit excited actually to have time to to do everything because I haven't streamed in quite a while I've made a handful of videos but um, yeah I've just haven't been in the headspace to to stream or anything but by the time I get home from work and all that jazz, I'm exhausted. Because it's been busy coming up to Christmas. It's been good fun. I love my job. But it's nice to have a break. <laughs> okay, so come down and around here. And his little fat belly, like that. It is, so I've got a few weeks. I'm very excited. So I'll be be streaming and playing and doing all kinds of things. I'm going to sit another little budgie right next to him. So I'll have two little budgies together. So they're sort of like a cute little pair. We do pairs of birds. Let's do that. Let's do that. And yeah, I've been practicing piano a lot, which has been going really well. And that's what inspired me with this was to to incorporate my two passions. So, I thought it'd be a bit of fun. Now, I've got to remember, I did I did an acrylic painting of budgies the other day and it was good fun, but I thought I'll do these really softly in watercolour. So I've got my two little budgies there and now I'm going to scroll down and find a kookaburra because I've got my lovely little kookaburra here. So I might draw me kookaburra down here. And he's a stocky little dude. And they've got a sort of a hair, they're not hairy, they've got fe rough feathery head. Like that. And I'll just get his body shape in first. I won't worry about his details, I'll just get his little chubby body in first. And then he's got rough feathers down there, and then comes down the back like that. And, and they're all different colours, these birds, so it's going to be quite a... Maybe not vibrant, but lots of contrast. I'll take the feathers down the back there. Actually, that's something I can do because you can see them through the notes. So I should probably draw the rest of their little bodies on, shouldn't I? And his little feet come over here, like that. And then his tail comes down here. So he could sit there like that. So he's our beautiful kookaburra. And his beak is the same width as his head. So that's how I measure, mark it about there. So his beak is about the same. These guys eat the snakes and rats and rabbits and God knows what else. They eat all kinds of stuff, these guys. And they've got quite a deep beak, big strong beaks. Come back and around here like that. And then he's got, they've got really big eyes. They've got amazing eyes and they're super friendly. Like we've got these wild here and they come up and sit on our veranda and and look at us and like have a chat <laughs> and then we've got 
a bazillion cockatoos at the moment too. We've got black cockies. We've got all sorts of cockies. <coughs> okay, he's a bit stock. Like I've got him really sort of squat there. So now, I should do him talking to someone else. I should do, actually, what could I do him talking to? Let's have a look. What else have I got? I could do two kookaburras. Can I do two kookaburras? I could do two kookaburras. I could do the one facing away. Let's do that. Do that. We'll have him sitting with another kookaburra here, a little bit bigger one maybe. So I'll just draw in his basic shape. Forget his beak for the second. And his back's to us. So, and then he's got his little chubby body there, like that, his little feet are in front of us. And then I'll do his tail. So his body and his, his head and his body is two times one, two. And his tail's two times as well, one, two. So I've got that about the right length. I use my hands to measure a lot. Um, and then his beak is, is the same length, the same width as his head. So head, beak. So his beak's about that long. Like that. I can make his head a little bit bigger. So you can adjust and readjust as you go. So yeah, I was, just like, I was going to do just birds, but I'm like, no, I'll do all Australian birds because it's an Australian piece of music. I thought that would be a fun one. I've just got to erase the tip of his beak is a little bit rough looking there, so I'll tidy that up. Like, oh no, now I've spudged it. We don't want to do that. There we go. Can hear my dogs going bananas. There's kangaroos everywhere at the moment. We've got kangaroos out the back, so they're probably just barking at the kangaroos. Okay, so now I'm going to buff out his head a little bit. He's got his eye there and his back's to us. So I can see his feathers up here and they come down his back and the, the watercolour will cover the paper. So I have to run, hopefully be back in a bit. No worries, Dale, no worries. Awesome. You do what you got to do, Luna. That's absolutely fine. I'll see you when I'm looking at you. And I'm going to make this into a, a, a YouTube video as well. It's a live stream on YouTube, but I'll make it into a video as well. So if you miss it here, you can watch it there. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to widen his little body a bit. So he's got his back to us. Okay, so that's two little kookaburras. Now we've got to do the quintessential Australian bird, the cockatoo. So I've got to find my cockatoo. Find my cockatoo. I'm sure I've got, I've got a million pics of, pics of cockatoos. Okay, so I might draw him. Um, where am I going to draw my cockatoo? I could draw him here. But I'm going to have to draw him on sort of an angle. So I'm going to draw his head. So he's got a beautiful crest like that and his crest can come up so I'm just going to draw his crest first because that gives me a position for his body like that and then I'll focus on his shape so they're basically just circles and circles and circles there's not a lot to them um, so yes I'm drawing him like this so he's sort of leaning on an angle over G <laughs> look at that okay so he's sort of leaning there like that and I can draw his wings Mm. I need to find another picture of a cockatoo. Let's go cockatoos. Cockatoo. So we've got these guys everywhere at the moment. Ah, oh, there's a good one. Okay, I'll use that one. Just turn him the other way. So, I'll just bring his wings down like that. His tails. This one, the reference picture I'm using is walking on the ground. So it's actually a good one for this. So then, and he's eating seeds or something. They've got quite deep little beaks. Mm, actually, they don't go in like that. They go like that. And then I'm just going to change. I can adjust and readjust a little bit. I'm going to erase the top. Oh, no, actually, that's not too bad. And he's got his little eyes like that. And he's a white bird. So I'm, the trick of doing white birds on white paper is to um, use blues. I use a lot of blue. That helps me to do that. And they've got quite big tails the length of their body. So I do that, like that. And 
I could do another little one sort of over here. So he's sort of looking this way. I'll just draw his shape in like that. Give him his crest as, his crest as back like that. And he's sitting sort of facing us like that. And his tail out the back. It means I don't have to draw branches because the music is the branches. <laughs> that's helpful. Okay, so that's that. Then... Draw his beak, and his eye, and his wing there, and he's got a wing there. <coughs> Excuse my coughing, I've had a cold too, I haven't been very well this week. Okay, so I've got two budgies there, I can do something else in here, I can do a magpie. I reckon I can do a magpie, so let's go and have a look here. I reckon I'm going to do a little magpie, actually I might draw me magpie up here, I might draw me magpie up here. Because magpies, are, we've got tons of these around too. They've got all, they've got their babies at the moment. They've got their little chicks and they're so cute. And they sit out the back, right in my backyard and squawk because they want their mum to feed them. And they sit on the fence and they watch the dogs and they play with the dogs. They tease the dogs. They fly down and fly up and make them chase them. And our mag, Australian magpies are super smart and super playful. They are the most magnificent little birds. I love them. One of my favourites, actually, the magpie, I have to say. They're just super clever, really smart birds. I know other countries have magpies, but they don't think of them the same way, but our guys are super duper smart. And they're black and white. And ours are all friendly, so they don't, they don't, they... We have a problem problem here with with magpies swooping people, but our 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 personal ones on our little farm don't because they're um they're used to us, so they don't bother us. They just they bring their babies up to us and everything. They introduce us to their new chicks because they know where we can we protect them. So that's our little magpie there. I'll do give him his little leg over here. I'll go his, his, I've made his bum a bit too. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. He's got a weird bottom. I'd better fix his bottom. Okay. And I'll, I'll just put... His little legs can be just tucked up. That's fine. Okay, so there's me little magpie. Um, what else have we got? Um, I've got me budgies. I've got me wrens. I've got me maggie. I've got me kookaburras. Cockatoos. Uh, I could do a galah, but they're a really funny colour. Uh I might do just a little bird down the bottom here, a little Willy Wagtail. I actually don't know their scientific name, their proper name. But he's we call them Willy Wagtails because they sit there and wiggle their little bottoms at you. <laughs> and they're super cute. Super cute. So, we'll do his little body. Like that. And then his tail is massive in comparison to his little body. Like that. Big fan tail. And I'm sure going to give him a couple more feathers like that. Whoops, the days. There we go. And he's black and white too, actually. We'll keep him simple because they're all sort of attracting their own little attentions. Um, I should give him a little a little partner. Um. Um, let's have a look. What have we got? Um, Australian birds. It's trying to find a little female one because I'm not sure what whether the female whether the female ones of these are the same colour. Um, hmm. They look to be the same. If I had a really big sheet of music, I draw. I could do a cassowary. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll just replicate him. I'll just replicate him. I'll just do, an, do another little one sitting down here. Like that. And then a little body like that. More crouched down, tail up. But his, but his little body sort of squat down. Like that. And... Ah. 
pardon me, now I'll go back to his to my reference photo. And he's got dark body like that. Okay, so that's me birds pretty much done. So I'm now going to start with my watercolours. So I'm going to spritz my watercolour tray, which I actually did earlier, but it's dried out. Give that a spritz. And grab my brush, get a bit of cloth, and start to paint. So this is a size 6 um, silver black velvet. They're my favourite brush. And I'm going to start my little wren with a pale blue. I'm going to go in with cobalt turquoise. Get that super, super pale on my watercolour, on my paper, on my palette, which is over here. And, uh, right, so, his little head, their little heads, his little head is blue, light blue, and their body's darker blue. So I'll just start by filling in, I can go over anywhere that I, um, see this, this little bit. This bit here is dark. I'll fill that in. And then come down here. I'll leave that because I'm going to do that a different colour. And you can see I'm doing this quite thick watercolour. Um, so that's that blue on there. Now, this is a little girl one. So she's actually mostly grey. So I'm going to mix up her grey using burnt umber. Get my burnt umber. Cobalt blue is my go-to grey mix. I like to mix my own greys. And I'm going to dilute that right down so it's super duper pale. Whoops, got a blob on my paper. So, and I'm just going to, I'm literally going to wash her over with that light grey. I can drag that blue into it as well because that blue will mix with it. And I can add some more detail. I'll add their little toes and stuff at the end. I'll do the final, like the little jewellery bits, the little pretty bits, right at the very end. Okay. I'll let that, that I'll let her dry a little bit, and I'll go back to him. Now, his body is a darker blue. So he's got an indigo on his chest. So I'm just going to use pure indigo. I'm going to dilute that right down. And I'm going to add that indigo onto here because he's all they're all blues they're all different shades of blue they're just magnificent little critters and they're teeny tiny they're the size of your thumb and they flit around everywhere and they're really protective of their little families we've got two little families of these living in our garden so there's two little girls and two little boys and a handful of little chicks and they come back every single year and bring their families to us and they're super duper cute <laughs> So I'm actually going to do the indigo around the eyes as well. I'll leave the eyes as the white of the paper. Ideally, you want to leave your highlights. The brightest white will be the white of the paper. So rather than adding white pen or white acrylic or anything at the end, leave your white paper. That creates a nicer effect, a much sharper effect. Okay, so that's his little eye. Now, I'm going to go back in. I've got to get a little bit more of that cobalt turquoise and pop that onto his back because I missed a little bit. I'm just using the very very tip of my brush. The very tip. And that's a bit that's still the same colour but a little bit less water, a little bit more pigment. Right. There we go. Now he's got more of a cobalt blue body. So I'm going to get my cobalt blue onto his little body. So you can see he's like three blues. And if you Google these little birds, they are just magnificent. He's got grey on his wings. That's the only thing. And he's got a little white bottom. But I'll use a very pale blue for that. Come down under there. And you can see that's quite diluted. And I'm just going to just create brush marks for his tail. Just sweep in for his little tail. Like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take that all the way down to his little bottom because it's going to dry back a couple of tones lighter. And I can add, I'll do his, I'll fill his wing in because I'll add the details in after. So that's basically him, his base colour done. 
So then her, I'll add a little bit more grey, make a bit of a stronger grey. So it's burnt umber, cobalt blue. And that unifies all your, if you use the same colours to mix every all the colours, it unifies everything as well. So you don't end up with clashing. Okay, so then I've got to, I've got to find a little female fairy wren. Um, fairy wren. Female fairy wren. Fairy wren. Okay, there she is. Actually, I'm going to change her. I'm going to darken off that, get, whoops, just get that diluted. I'm just going to grey that down, that blue that blue that I've put on there. And then get a little bit of yellow ochre. It's actually more of a yellow ochre colour. So and I'll just carefully, and I can dilute this down. I've got a little smudge on my page. So I'm going to clean my brush. I touched it with my hand. Clean my, give that, a, I'm going to dob that with my um, cloth and then get my brush and just lightly, I've got to be careful because I've printed, it doesn't matter, I can actually paint something over the top of that anyway, won't matter, so I'll just get, that'll dry back really pale anyway, I had a bit on my hand that I didn't know, didn't realise I had, okay, doesn't matter, so then come back and darken up little feathers that'll dry back again like I said that'll dry back a bit pa much more pale got her little wings come down here and her tails gray so the boys are bright blue and the little girls are gray all right and again leaving her little face is the white of the paper just gonna drag that down soften that edge just use the edge of my brush and soften like that Okay, so that's those two. I'll let them dry and I'm going to go on to my little budgies because we do love a budgie. And I've just got to go back to my budgie reference picture. Uh, I've got reference pictures everywhere. Where's my budgies? There's my budgies. Here, budgie, budgie, budgies. There they are. Okay, <laughs> I've got my dog looking at me in through the window. So I'm going to start with a green budgie. So I'm going to mix up my green. So I'm going to go yellow, uh, a roll in yellow, that's already got a bit of blue in it, and a bit of cobalt to make a green, and I'm going to add a bit more yellow actually, to make a sort of a sappy green, and then I'm going to fill in this little budgie's belly. These guys live up north, we get them quite a lot up north, and they're really cool. They're a, ver a, a species that, well, you know, everyone knows budgies. They're a type of parrot, parakeet. Okay, come down here. Their little tails come to a point. Okay. Now, I'm going to make the other one. These guys come in a multitude of colours. So I'm going to, actually, I'll go up there. The little faces are white, but I'm going to just go around the outside edge. And um, just got to pick up that little bit at the bottom there. Look at that, that little, the, um, the thing, <laughs> the note is actually where his feet should be. So that's perfect. That actually looks like his little feet. And now I'm going to use for the other one, I'm actually going to use the same blue that I had before, cobalt turquoise. Dilute it because he's a turquoisey bird. And... And the difference between boy and girl budgies is one's got boys have blue beaks and girls have pink beaks. Did you know that? The little not the little bit above their nostrils that's coloured. Little boy ones are blue and little girl ones are pink. I thought that's so cute. And I'm just going to get that almost touching each other. Because it doesn't matter if those colours blend together a little bit. It's all cute. And come down here. Yeah, right down to the tip of his tail that. Actually I can take that, I'm just having a look, I'm going to take the stripes because he's got stripes on his wings but there's a lot of white on him so I'm going to, while it's still diluted, I'm just going to carefully use the very tip of my brush and paint on those little stripes just like that now just to suggest that there's little stripes there and then 
come up onto his face again leaving the white of the paper for the white of the birds like right, that'll go around his little eye though like that and their little beaks their little beaks are yellow ochre so I'll get a tiny tip of brush tip of my brush with yellow ochre and just draw paint down onto the beak like that and him as well like that and they've got little parrot beaks okay I'm gonna leave their eyes I'll come back to him he's still a bit damp I can I'm actually gonna use I'm gonna make up a turquoise with yellow I'm gonna add a bit of turquoise to my green I just want to lime it up a little bit and while that's still damp, I'm going to drop that in, the shadow areas, and let that flow around like that, and blend it around a little bit. Take it down his tail, let it flow, let watercolour what, do what watercolour does best. I'm just going to damp my brush, ex take out the excess moisture, and I'm going to run around some little stripes I could add more detail in a little bit same on him even though he's blue he does have a little bit of because it's turquoise it's sort of in, it, I can use it the shadow tone make it a bit darker with a bit of green in it as well like that come down underneath Okay, so that's them sort of blocked in. I'll come back and do their little fine. These are great, Jen. Very cool idea indeed. Thank you. Hello. How are you, Will? That's what I thought. I've been playing a lot of music and I've been loving my music. And um, I, I just wasn't feeling inspired. And then I'm like, you know what? This is my fav one of my favourite pieces of music ever. This is an Australian piece and I love playing it. Um, and I thought, you know what? Australian animals on an Australian piece of music. So anyone who knows how to play can play this. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll know, if you know Australian music, you'll know what song it is. Um, but yeah. But thank you for popping in. Well, how have you been, Dal? So now this is a magpie. I've got to find me magpie. Um, I know I've got a million magpie photos. Because we have them everywhere. Uh, maybe I'll have to um, Google. Because I'm not scrolling back through all my photos. Magpie. So how have you been, Dal? What's been happening? There he is. That's me Aussie magpie. And I'm not going to use black. They're a black bird, but I'm going to use indigo. Because indigo is just... Nothing in nature is black. I'm good. I'm excellent. I am very good. I'm on holidays. Yay. For um, I've finished up, broke up work this week. Um, so I'm on a holidays for about three weeks. So there's going to be lots of games, lots of art. Because my silly little dog has broken her little foots. So I have to stay home with her. So I'm not going anywhere for my holidays. I'm staying home. Because um, poor, yeah, poor little Miss Pippi, she's hurt herself. So I've got to stay home and take her to the vet every week. <coughs> Excuse me, hang on. I'm getting over a cold, so I've got a bit of a cough. I'm good. About to render a bunch of short... Render a bunch of short VJ... Ooh, cool! Cool, cool. Sounds exciting. How's your game coming along? Anyone who doesn't know, um, Mindsai, he's on YouTube and Twitch. Um, pop a follow does the most beautiful beautiful computer design like um rendering of 3d just everything just alter things uh, yeah <laughs> holidays yes i'm on holidays it's so nice i love my job but i'm tired it's been a big year <laughs> it's been a big year so um i'm glad to have a break and my boss was wonderful to give me a holiday like christmas time off because usually you don't get Christmas time off in retail. But of course, my boss is amazing. So they gave me my retail time. They gave me time at Christmas with my family. 
So very, very lucky. Now, again, white of the paper is the white of the bird. Um, I'm going to, his beak, their beaks are light. They're a light grey. Uh, so, and so he's all indigo. He looks right, but he's all indigo. I haven't used any black. Now, we'll go on to the kookaburras. So yes, first day of my holidays, of course, I get sick, as you do, because <laughs> that's how I roll. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm on the on the right side of it now. I'm definitely on the recovery side, but it knocks you about a bit. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do add the finishing details at the end. So these are be kookaburras. So these guys are grey and blue. So I've still got my grey on my palette. This one's backs to me. I didn't screenshot it because that was smart, wasn't it? I didn't screenshot. Oh, yeah, I know I did. There we go. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do a very light wash of this grey over his whole back where his wings are. Take it all the way. All the way. Very washed out. Very light. Because I'm going to add some browns over the top. I just started working on it again after the last... One got destroyed. Happy to hear you're getting a vacation with holidays. Oh, cool! So, so you, if, if you you have haven't moved in yet, um, because yeah, Will's house was demolished in a in a cyclone. We get tornado. No, we tor hurricane or cyclone. We get cyclones. You get hurricanes. They go the opposite direction. That's what it is. But he's rebuilt his house, which is very exciting. Uh, I'm just going to absorb up. My little dog is looking in the window at me. Okay, so I'm going to absorb up the excess moisture. Just take the moisture out of my brush, pick it up. And then I'm going to add some burnt umber and let that flow. A little bit of burnt umber, which is a beautiful reddy brown. I'm just going to drop that in the top. Again, the wider the paper is the wider of the bird. I'm just going to add some little feathery textures. Just, you can hear him. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, drop a little bit more in, just around here. Like that. And then their tails are stripy. I've just got to pick up that excess bit there. There's a little bead of water at the bottom. Go back into my burnt umber. Just add little dobs of that. Let watercolour do what it does best. You can see that sort of bleeding around and mixing with itself, and I love that. Get a little bit more. Got to get burnt umber. Even transparent sienna would work for these little birds. He's quite dark around his little eyes. So again, I've left the white of the paper for the white of the bird. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll let him dry a little bit and I'll go back in. Um, and now this one, I'll just do his wings because their bellies are white. So I'll just do his wings, or grey anyway, ah, light grey. If you're very fast, you can pick up any mistakes. I, do, I just drop paint on the paper again because I'm very messy. <laughs> so his little wing comes down here. Then he's got his stripes on his tail. So I can go down the outside of his tail like that. Because he's mostly white. And I'll just add these little stripes in. Like that. It doesn't have to be exact because it's, you know, it's a pretty um, busy drawing. Just have, you know, what's the beauty of watercolours? You can be a bit more loose, a bit more free with your style, which I really like about watercolours because I'm quite a loose sort of drawer. Now, um, I'll let him dry a little bit. Now, the cockies are white. So the trick with a cockatoo is I'm going to do their crests. So their crests are yellow when they flay out their, press, their crests. I'm going to clean my palette because my palette's got a bit of blue on it. There we go. Get a bit of yellow. And I'm just, whoops, smudged my bottom of my bird. Clean my brush and just wipe that carefully. I print, yeah, I printed the music onto watercolour paper, onto nice Archer's watercolour paper. 
so that I could use it for this. Um, so then if I like it, because I'm going to keep this piece, I thought this would be a fun piece for me to have. Because I love me birds and I love me music. I'll hang this in my piano room. So I'll colour in their little crests. And you hear my little dog try to be scratching at the window. He's like, let me in, Mum. Okay, fill in their little crests like that. Oh, bear, bear. Sad sack. Okay, now, because they're white birds, I'm not going to leave them completely white. I'm going to shadow in with using, using my cobalt turquoise, super diluted, to create shadow tones on the bottoms of them. Because otherwise they're going to look flat. So anywhere that there's um, a little bit of colour or a little bit of shadow, I'm going to utilise the blue. I'm just going to pull up my reference again. Like that. And I can also add a little bit underneath the tail, like that. But they're mainly going to be white. And I can actually, I can use a bit of pen too. Like I, I, I can... You know, the rules are there are, are no rules. I could go back in with a little bit of micron pen to add a little bit of line work around them as I need to, if I need to. Um, I love, and I, I'm, a, I'm a believer, I love drawing and I love seeing people draw and I love seeing the lines. I love watching their techniques. So I quite, like a lot of like purists will, will erase the lines. I don't. I love seeing line work. You can see how people draw. And, um, yeah, I never erase the line work ever. I think it looks wonderful. Okay, I'll let that dry. I've got to do their little beaks. Their beaks are yellow ochre, but I'll let them dry a little bit. Now, these little guys down the very bottom are little... I call them willy wagtails. But I'm not going to do it. They're black, but I'm going to do in blue. I'm going to use indigo. And, again, leave the white of the paper... So the white of the bird, so their little bellies are white, their little eyes are a different tone, so I'm not going to go over the eyes. Um, fill in their little bodies. And then once that's all dry, I can go back and start adding feather detail. I apologise for my funny voice, I've just, yeah, we're at the end of a cold. So I've been a bit, ugh, for a few days. Definitely on the men now, but I sound like rubbish. All right, come on around here and pick that up. I've got to clean my, so you just clean my, dob my brush on my cloth that I've got in my hand. And, pardon me, absorb that up there. So this is just the indigo that I had sitting on my palette. Pardon me. Come back around here. Oh, I've got a cup of tea here. Silly me, I've got my cup of tea. Oh, that's better. My throat's a bit sore. Okay, so come down here. Draw this little guy. And then the tail feathers coming up here. Just swoop that up with the tip of my pen, my brush. Like that. There we go. I've got my two little wa willy wagtails, I call them. <laughs> <coughs> now... I'm going to get my fine pen, fine brush. I've got a lot of fine brushes, and I've just got two dollar shop ones, like just cheap little. Whoops! And I dropped it on the floor. The second I pick it up, what do I do? I drop it. So I'm going to get a bit more paint onto my palette. So I'm going to get a bit of indigo, a bit of in. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to use cobalt blue up here. I'll pop a bit of cobalt blue on my palette, but more paint, less water, because I want it to be thicker. More paint, less water. Get my really thin brush. It's got a reasonable point on it. And I'm going to start. I'm going to add. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> I get an even thinner brush. Even thinner brush. And I'm going to go into my indigo, actually. I'm going to add a bit of indigo to it. Get a bit stronger. I'm going to draw. Now, start to draw in feather details. <coughs> so, draw his feathers like that some lines coming up and you can start to get the detail in so draw and this is just a two dollar shop brush 
shops. So in America, you call them dollar stores. We call them $2 shops. Um, and yeah, they're like a dollar for a bunch of them. Just got to try and be careful not to get it all over everything. Because I keep resting my hand on my painting, which is not the best of ideas. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to go, I'm going to do around the edge of the eye. I'm having a look. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of the white. So you can just see a little highlight. And I'll do under the beak, because under the beak's darker. And this is where you start to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of fun, a little bit of life to the painting. Like that. Okay, now his little legs. Again, I'm just going to use indigo for his little legs. And his little claws coming around. He's wrapped around his notes, like that. And I'm going to go a bit of, bit, bit of pure indigo onto the bottom of his tail. The only thing about these cheap brushes, they don't hold a lot of water, which doesn't matter because I want it to—I want it for fine lines anyway. But they, yeah, they don't hold a lot of water. Now, I'm going to go on to my little female one. I've got to get up. I do have a reference photo for her. I think I screenshot it. I hope I screenshot it. I didn't screenshot it. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, female fairy wren. A female, just so I know where to put the shadows, fairy wren. So this would actually make a great gift idea for someone who loves music and birds. If you get, you know, get the idea, if you want to um, try this, that'd be a wonderful gift idea for someone to stick in their music room. Which is exactly what I'm going to do with this one. It's going to be framed and put into my music room. Yeah. Because she's a little bit darker, I can add a little bit of brown to her wing feathers, like that. So I've used a bit of transparent sienna, actually. It's a bit of a stronger, ready brown. And I'm going to touch her little tail feathers, like that, just to add a little bit of detail on there. Um, the little beaks are grey. I'm going to go around her little eyes with this brown, like that. And I'm just going to suggest the feather pattern. That's the beauty of watercolour. I've done the under, underneath washes, so now it's just a matter of adding just suggestions of detail. I'll do a little claws on there, like that. And that's pretty much here. I'll do a little eye. I'll do a little eye. I get a bit of my dark colour and just plop a little dot. I'm not going to do all of it, just pop a little dot, leaving a little bit of white. Their beaks are grey, so I'll use the blue for her beak actually. I'm not going to use grey for her beak, I'll use the blue. Like that. And then I could actually add that around her eye a little bit as well. She does, they do have little flecks of the blue. Okay, that's pretty much, and I've got to add a little bit of shadow actually under her tum. So I'll add a little bit of blue for the shadow underneath her tum. And I'll just blend that out with a bit of water so it's not so strong. So that's my little wrens. That's my little wrens done. Right, now to move on to the budgies. And I can add any fine detail I can add to the very end. I can add a little bit of pen. Um, now, budgies, budgies, budgies. Got to find my budgie picture. Okay, I know I've got them here. There they are. Okay, so now I'm going to, again, indigo. Indigo is like this, my go-to dark. So these birds, these budgies, have got stripes. Again, using my very fine tip, I'm going to add a line around the eye, leaving the white of the paper to, um, for the highlight, like that. And then... Just gonna roughly, not even, not even really. I'm just adding the lines in for the feathers. They're covered in stripes. They've got little stripes. They're camouflaged. They're very cleverly camouflaged little budgies. 
for our for our bush and trees and stuff. And the feathers go slightly different directions. So there we go with that one. And I can also add they got their little blibs of blue on their little cheeks. Like that. We've got one there and one there. He's a little boy, so we'll give him the blue nose. Like that. Little legs. Put his little claws around there. Gonna take his little wing. Give him the tips of his little wings. Like that. Then come down. Like that. There we go. And I'll take that down the outer edge of his tail, just up there. Be my little dog again. Okay, so that's the one little budgie done. Now, we will go on to my green budgie. And again, I'm still going to use the indigo for his little stripy bits. For his little pupil. Leaving a little bit of the white. He's sort of facing us a little bit, so... I can draw his little stripes coming around. Like that. Okay. And his feathers for his wings. You can see the sides of them. So I'm going to draw. Come down there like that. And then his little claws. Like that. Come down the tip of his tail. And then he's got his little dark bits there. Two little spots. They've got like a little necklace of, of, of feather dots. Okay. Having a quick look at my big screen. <coughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to draw the outline of that eye. Come around the outline. There we go. Now, it's a little girl one, so I'm going to give her a pink nose. Her little nostrils. I'm going to clean my brush. And then get a little bit of red. And pop that of her nose. So the little boys are blue and the little girls are pink. Okay, so that's my little budgies. Now, on to my magpie. And I'm working from the top down because I tend to smudge everything. <laughs> now, I'm going to add a bit of burnt umber to my blue, which will make it really super dark. And I'm going to add the shadows to my little magpie. Like that down and around in the feather lines leaving the highlights the underneath the underneath paint as the, the highlights okay where's my magpie um, I need my magpie 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 Australian magpies are very different. Watch anyone who's on here. Watch an Australian. Watch a video on Australian magpies playing. They are the funniest little dudes. They are so playful. They hang off your washing. They hang upside down on your washing, and they play with each other. And they just oh, they're silly things. They're so fun. They're the most amazing bird of any bird. So yeah, I highly suggest Google Australian magpie playing. They are hilarious and they're so smart. And they can, you can teach them to talk and everything. My grandma had one, um, and yeah, she taught it to talk. So they're super duper smart little birds. So yeah, Google it. If you haven't seen one, Google. <laughs> Australian magpie. They're hilarious. They've got a sense of humour. They really do have a sense of humour. So I just, and their beaks are light coloured, but I'm going to do the outsides. Just slightly greyer. I draw their eyes. Their pupils are in the middle. They've got beautiful golden eyes, actually, so I'll let that dry. Now, my kookaburras. I'll come back to the eyes, the actual de the final detail on the eyes at the end. I've got to get kookaburra. Kookaburra. I know I've got my references here. There he is. And they've got quite a bright blue on them as well. So I'm going to go in with my turquoise. So this is just the detail. So I'm using almost pure paint, very little amount of water. Much more paint than much more pigment than water. And I'm just going to add in feather detail. Just rough. 
not not fine detail by any means just a little bit of rough detail just show it just suggesting the direction of the feathers not exactly just suggesting it like that okay now <coughs> I'm going to go in with my ready brown which is my transparent sienna which is a beautiful ready brown it's almost like caput mortem if you've got caput mortem on your palette it's the same sort of ready brown and I'm going to start to add they've got quite stringy feathers they're rough looking so I'm going to add then they've got giant eyes these birds too they've got amazing little faces so and they're fun to paint because they've got real real um sort of what's the word real personality um, and their beaks are a ready tone so I'm going to come down here I'm going to dilute this the top of the beaks lighter than the bottom so I'm just going to carefully drag some water to drag that bottom of his beak to make it slightly better the top of his beaks gray add a little bit of that red coming down here onto his feathers rough those up he's got a beautiful golden eye as well so I've got to add some darker brown so I'm going to go back to my burnt umber now just to define the feathers on his wings leaving that blue and make these longer feathers just adding lines to create the longer feathers like that and they come right down the back like that and his shorter feathers on the back there I'm just going to leave the lines. I can add, I'll add a little bit of um, blue underneath the tail actually. I've got to add a little bit of the blue underneath the tail. Clean my brush. Get a bit of my cobalt blue up the top here. Got to clean my brush. There's still a bit of blue on it, a bit of brown on it. Got to be a bit careful because I don't want brown on me blue. There we go. So then I can add a little bit of that blue under there, under his tail. It a bit more need a bit more because they've got brown and blue little stripes under there that's better like that having a quick look I can add a bit more blue onto there right now I'll draw I'll draw his little pupil in with um, um, a pen I think add the gray on top just a light gray very diluted so it's just almost just tints the paper to the top of his beak okay having a quick look now I'm going to get onto this little cocky um cocky mag uh, kookaburra I've done so many birds I've forgotten who's who who's who at the zoo so I'm going to add these little feathers get a bit more of my burnt transparent sienna come around his little eye I'll add the eye pu the pupil in sort of after I've got to get the picture of that one. Where is he? There he is. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab my brown, my burnt umber, and I'm going to scoop his feathers up and towards his back, like that. <coughs> Pardon me. So yes, yeah, so I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm just scooping the feathers. Not going into too much detail because it's a very little drawing. Like these pictures, if you look at the size of my hand, these birds are teeny tiny. So it's hard to get too much detail. But I'm just suggesting, that's the beauty of watercolour, is you can just suggest the colours you want. I'm going to make them a bit, little bit darker directly around his eye. A little bit darker. I'll put the pupils in very last when they're dry. Like that. Now, again, the stripes on the tails. Stripes on the tails. So, there's three feathers. I can probably just define those a bit now. Add the brown and then I'll add a bit of blue as well. You hear my little dog, I apologise. He wants to come in. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to add a little touch of blue. Again, I'm going to go with my cobalt turquoise. And just add little bits. 
like that. That'll do. Now, you can see I've got a little smudge on my cockatoo. So I'm going to clean my brush really thoroughly. Clean my brush super duper thoroughly. Get Make sure there's nothing in it. Check it on my piece of paper. Right. And then I'm going to scrub just that. See if I can get rid of it. That blob. There's a blob in a spot that I don't want it. So if I'm very careful and I just scrub that with the tip of my brush, get a clean piece of cloth, and I can pick that up. Or I'm just going to have to move his wing. <laughs> that is also an option. I could just move his wing. Um, I'll clean up that bit there too. All right. No, not going to move it. So I'm going to have to add detail. I'm going to have to add detail over the top to make that don't go away. That's okay. I can move his wing. I'll move his wing a little bit. So, again, go because he's a white bird, I'm going to use a shadow tone. I'm going to use a blue. So, I'm going to add cobalt turquoise and just take that and extend that wing down the back. Like that that over that little mistake. Just got to get my cockatoo up. Watch, check what directions their feathers. Because they're, all birds have all different feathers. Okay, there's the one I use as a reference. So, they've got lots of long a little bit rougher on the back, that's okay. I'm just going to blend that wet my brush and just drag that a little bit like that get it wetted again and just sort of blend that out get my turquoise just ruffle up underneath there we go so his feathers so go way out the back there They've got dark beaks. I'm going to use my indigo for his beak. Got to be very careful here because they're very little to work with. So I'm using the very tip of my brush to get that beak on. And they've got a hooked beak. But I can even go over that with my um, pen at the end. Now, their little eyes are very dark, but I'm just going to use indigo in the centre of his little eye. little indigo eyes like that and then I'm going to add <coughs> a bit of orange to the bottom of his um, crest just to, to give it a little bit of a definition like that there we go a bit of orange on his crest I'll do the same on this one while I've got the orange on my brush. So he's sitting with his crest away from us. Okay, now having a look, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre because they reflect the colours around them. And I'm going to add that underneath his wing and in his shadow areas. So just take that down, a little bit more yellow ochre onto his tail. Maybe not so much. That'll dry back a couple of tones lighter, like that. And I could always go back over that with a, oh, with a little bit of white if I have to. I'll try not to. I'll see how it dries. It might dry okay. Again, I'm going to go over the edge of the beak. A bit more shape, go around the outside of the eye, because you've got big eyes like that and draw his little feet under there he's holding on to the notes okay that'll do him for now now go on to my other little cockatoo and do it round his eye and then try and get the pupil into the middle this is something you could do with a pen probably be more precise with a pen do his little beak 
and he's facing us so I'll just draw his little beak like that fill that in like that all right have another sip of my cup of tea <laughs> and then again going into my yellow ochres and my blues to um, create the shadows underneath they go under here under his little tum put a little bit of texture and down under his tail I might even make his tail a fraction longer because his tail should be a bit, bit longer so I'm just going to take that a bit longer like that and I'll blend that out using my brush I'll just blend that and that'll continue that tail on for me okay let's have a look get a little bit of my burnt umber just take it around dilute it a lot more than that and wet my brush just drag that out in the shape of his little belly like that and you can see that's created his little shadows um, I could add a bit of transparent sienna <coughs> very diluted transparent sienna into his little ripply feathers like that I'm also going to take that onto his, um, use a bit of the transparency and onto his back feathers here. Like that, and create some more feather texture. Like that. And that is pretty much my little cockies. And now I'm going to go onto my little willy wagtails right at the bottom. Um, and they're almost black. Well, they are black, but I'm not going to use black. I'm going to use my. Um, indigo blue which is my replacement for black I never use black try not to use black okay so I'm gonna darken up most of these little birds I'll leave the little highlight areas I need a thicker brush I need to get my other brush wet that that fine one the detail brush is just too fine there's a bit too much water in this one so I'm gonna sponge that off a little bit It'll help me fill this in. There we go. So I'll make them darker underneath, like that. His little wing comes out the back there. <coughs> and then, like that. Just add that little bit of detail in. Just a suggestion. And then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and scoop it down for his little wagtail. those in leaving little highlights in it you can see the little highlights okay okay and again same on this little guy one two three four five I didn't actually count how many they had <laughs> again darken up the, the head make it a lot darker on the head make it a bit rounder that one and again, scoop the feathers so that it looks like the little wing feathers are coming around. Okay, having a quick look. Okay, now I'll go back in with my fine brush in a minute. Just get his little legs on okay <coughs> now I'm going to grab a micron pen just to do the pupils of these birds eyes so I'll grab a 0.2 micron pen just to do the uh, the pupils so you see he's got I can do the little fine details no, they, I don't need to worry about that I need to do the magpies the kookaburras I mean that 
cocky cockies are okay. Just go around the eyes of these little guys. Again, I'm still leaving the white of the paper. I'll just add their little beaks a light coloured. So I'm just going to outline them with a little bit of micron. Right, I haven't missed anyone's eyeballs. I've got everyone's eyes in. We're good. And I can draw their little legs, like his little feet. I can do the claws with my, um, I didn't do that one's beak. See the cocky's toes, I like that. Here's a, so I'm just drawing them in with micron pen. Like that. Okie doke. Now I've got a couple of little smudges here and there, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I'll see if I can lift this one. If not, I can always go over the background with a wash of colour. Um, I've got to do the beak on the cook on the kookaburra, so I'm going to clean my brush, and they're transparent or transparent sienna on the underneath and grey on the top. So I'm just going to get a little bit of transparent sienna on my brush, diluted, super diluted, and just pop that on there. I've got to let that dry a little bit, and then I'll add the top of the beak. Again, I'll clean my brush and try and scrub up little mistakes that I've made and it lifts off pretty easily. I could do a wash of um, like a light blue or something around the background. Just trying to lift that off too. Whoops. Doesn't really matter. It all adds to its art, isn't it? Um, I think if I add, oh, what could I add? Could I add? Could I add a background? Do I want to add a background? Hmm. Do I want to add a background? <coughs> I don't think so. I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. I don't think I'll add a background. I've got to add a little bit more, a little bit of a shadow underneath these little birds here, because they've got to give them a little green, a little bit of bluey green shadow under their tummies, like that. Oops. And get my fine brush again and go in with some more dark just on these little willy wagtails at the bottom. I just need to get a bit more definition on their feathers. Just a bit. Like that. So they're looking a bit a bit wishy washy. So just add a little bit of just definition on the lines. Strengthen those little lines. Like that. Just do their little feather shapes. Like that. Little leggy. Little leggy. Now I can add the grey on that one's beak. It's the kookaburra's beak is nearly dry. So very diluted. Okay, I reckon I am going to call that done. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. I'll be back in a few days, hopefully, and I'll do some more work for, do more art for you. I'm going to sign this one down here. Sign it over me smudge. <laughs> That'll help disappear that smudge. And go. Oh, I might be right in 2023 for much longer, will we? nearly 2024 2023 I always put the date on there because I've got a painting that my great grand uncle did and it's about 120 years old and I always look at it and think oh that's so cool in 1902 it was painted so he was a beautiful artist so yeah so that's all done so I hope you've enjoyed it thank you so much for watching um yeah if you're on YouTube love it if you click like and subscribe um so at this point I'm going to find someone on Twitch that we can go raid uh, so we call that on, on Twitch it's a raid um, I don't know who's on uh, where's my oh has it locked me out has it okay we won't be doing that because it's locked me out so <laughs> I will just catch you all next time have a great day thank you so much for hanging out I hope you enjoyed this 